Guys, congrats on Thanks. Avengers Endgame. Thanks, uh, amazing what this film has done. I, I mean, I, I think you'd probably have to call it a little bit of a disappointment at the box office. Yeah, I mean. I mean we had high expectations. Yeah, the, 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 I think the few people who've seen it, though, have really enjoyed it. I, I just hope that, you know, the word gets out. Yeah. Catches yeah, fire, yeah. like a little yeah. indie breakout. I think this is what you call critical darling. I yes, think is, the t is the term. Is it for, okay. for yeah, this? Is, like this is why the independent film yeah. awards were invented. Yes, <laughs> recognize right. little pictures it, like that. It's got it's got spirit. Seriously though, I mean, how do you describe your expectations heading into this? It, it, it's it's unparalleled not only in, in terms of the MCU, but I think just in in terms of event movies in general. Um, is it is it going to be a disappointment if it's not one of the highest oh, grossing movies of all I, I time? Mean, <laughs> in, in your heart of hearts, you want it to beat Infinity War, right? Yeah. Like, okay, you know, but if it's and if yeah. it's in that ballpark, if you beat Infinity War by a dollar, you went, okay, good. We're yeah. If it was, if it had, if it had not beaten Infinity War, even yeah. if it had made a ton of money. Um, people would have been able to spin. Mm, yeah, you know, didn't yeah. didn't quite they, get there. They hit you? their ceiling. Didn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But right. you know, yeah. up until up until it came out, or at the very least, up until the pre-sales started going crazy, uh, it was just a movie. It wasn't an event. You know, I was just I just wanted to sew up all the endings properly so people didn't go like, ah, oh, you brought me all the way there, and then kind of drop the ball. Uh, so, and I also, you know, I wanted, I knew when people went nuts about the ending of Infinity War mm. that Endgame was going to work really well. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just excited to give those people the closure <laughs> that they so desperately yeah. needed. So there's, so there's no, it's the goal to beat Infinity War. There's no, there's no bittersweetness to uh, oh, passing yourselves. No. No, oh, no. Uh, that's the goal. That's no, the you goal. want to. Don't you want to improve every year? Of course. Aren't of you course. more handsome now than you were yes. last year? I don't know about yeah. that. Although, I gotta yeah. say. Hair's thinning. I don't foresee beating this one with whatever comes, whatever comes next. next yeah. right. So we're going to have to table that rule because otherwise right. it's like 50 years of disappointment ahead of us. So. <laughs> yeah. You guys have talked about how you needed, how, how this series, this installment demanded a resolution. Yeah. Um, at least to what we've seen so far through the saga of the MCU and the, and the 21 movies that led up to this. Mm -hmm. um, what were the biggest challenges in landing on, on that re resolution that you guys ultimately found? Uh, it was trying to end the arcs of six Avengers, or at least mm -hmm. give them really nice concluding moments. Uh, and so the hard part is three years ago when we're trying to design what the second movie looks like. The idea was always to take people off the board at the end of the first one, leaving, no coincidence, the people from <laughs> that you've known the longest mm -hmm. so that we could give them the biggest arcs. Um, so it's a combination of, of uh, designing big moments that allow for those six people to go through some stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's why we jump five years, mm -hmm. right? That's why we seal the deal and cut Thanos' head off and you don't know where the movie's going, but mm -hmm. they now have to deal with their loss. How do they deal with it? Mm -hmm. uh, it's that it's the design of the of the movie and particularly that yeah. what becomes the second act. Yeah. And it was also finding a way to beat Thanos that didn't feel like right. we just depowered him so that we could get to him at some point. So mm -hmm. he lets himself die and then the only way to kill him is to for Tony to die. So like there are giant steps and sacrifices to take out the guy who won the first movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like, I, th I feel like that's the only thing the Russos would say about the sort of logic that went into who, who survived, who died during the, sta the snap. They would say, there's a reason the original six survived. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But what can you say about everybody else, just to go back to Infinity War mm -hmm. for a minute, what can you say about the decisions made around everyone else in terms of who lived and who died and, and sort of what discussions went into those? Obviously, people are looking at, well, Black Panther has his own franchise starting, sure. spider man is still going. Of course, that. yeah. But I mean, if, if we didn't take uh, big players off the board, I think you'd smell the fixes in, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like if it was just all secondary players and somehow uh, if you had a, if your name was above the title, if you were a franchise, uh, you didn't you, you survive. That <laughs> yeah. that seemed a bit of a cheat. Death of the um, sidekick. And we've yeah. often said that uh, you know we're trying to give the experience to the fans that Chris and I had in 1977, right when Star Wars came out, or Empire three years later came mm -hmm. out. You know I don't know 
I don't really know there's another movie coming, right? I certainly don't know that people are signed to long-term deals or anything like that, right? right? Eight-year-olds don't read Variety, mm -hmm. so all we can do is we the best movie. Right? <laughs> all we can do is the best movie we can. And again, we live in a social media world, and, and the internet has, has affected fandom. Mm -hmm. But um, we just have to honor the characters and the moments that that we've rolled out on screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about the the tone of this film and how you guys landed on it. Yeah. Um, I think it, one of it, like like your past work, it's so effective in just towing that line between tragedy and comic, especially in the wake of the events of Infinity War. Right. Yeah. Um, you expect this movie to be uh, to be sober in a lot of ways, um, and it is. And we start uh, we start it, it by is. reminding you in yeah. the very in the, the very right. open opening moments are shocking, um, but at the same time we still we still find that that comedy through those comedy through lines we're still able to you know, the, to cut through that tension with laughs throughout mm -hmm. the course of it. Um, you know, tragedy comic, oftentimes in the same line. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of like, like one line from, from Rocket that I loved, mm. uh, you know, where he's he's saying, I lost friends too, and he's listing them, yeah. and he's naming them, and then he gets to Mantis, he can't remember her name, and, and the one with the antennas. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, how, how, how did you guys, what can you say about how you, how you landed on that tone, how you knew not to take it too far in the direction of comedy, how you yeah. knew not to go too far serious, in, in where you well, guys I up. mean, it is a celebration of what came before it as much as it's a, you know, kind of somber facing of what happened, the movie before it. It's a celebration of the 21 movies. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew it couldn't be just a very somber slog through it. And also these characters don't, you know, they're funny. And it's in their DNA. It's not necessarily in the situations they're in. So they're mm -hmm. going to make jokes regardless. Right. And, you know, if... If you've been to enough funerals, you realize they do pretty often get funny. Yeah. Because people are funny throughout their lives. They only die that one time. You know, mm -hmm. if they were dying for the last 50 years, pretty depressing funeral, but generally yeah. they're not. So you recall everything that came before, and that feeds into a, you know, yeah. actually fairly light tone. We've often found that, um, uh, that characters will make jokes under duress, mm -hmm. and we enjoy that. Like, if... if um, uh, that's why it, it's one of the reasons Spider-Man works really well. It's like he's, you know, he's usually funny uh, when the things are tensest. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, so that's I just find that very realistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Were there any any specific jokes that you guys can recount that just didn't work because they 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 took the humor too far? Well, I don't know if they took the humor too far during the the section where they're together, sort of pouring through the back MCU catalog to see where the stones are sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, and to plan their their mission. We wrote all sorts of sections where we were kind of poking fun at logic holes in the preceding movies, right. uh, which amused us, but <laughs> got to a point where A, it's like a half an hour long, and B, yeah. you know, we might be the only people who that's are right. laughing at this point. So let's pull back and right. uh -huh. just make fun yeah. of a couple. Because that, that section is about going back to the movies, not talking about going back to the movies. Right. right? So we might as well get to, you know, the time heist. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I'm sure you probably also didn't want to call, I mean, not, not like those movies <clears throat> haven't been fully dissected, mm -hmm. but also like there's a matter of like maybe calling attention to things that haven't. <laughs> it's usually our own. Yeah. You know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. We had a whole runner where uh, Rhodey was really adamant about why Steve couldn't just jump out of the plane at the end of yeah. his own movie. Why'd you have to crash <laughs> the plane? Like, <laughs> it's like no parachutes on there at all. No. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Uh, and then there's other things where Frankly, if we looked too hard at certain things, you'd realize the stones are in multiple places. For instance, the the Tesseract, the Space mm -hmm. Stone, is in is in a few spots, mm -hmm. and including in Asgard when they go to get the ether, yeah. it's over there. It's down the hall. Yeah. Right. Um, and we actually wrote a version where they went after it, and it just got too complicated. So we decided the lock on Odin's vault was much too difficult right. to get into. It would be set aside. Mm -hmm. We'd go elsewhere for it, but. <clears throat> yeah, it took a little scaling back on the jokes in order to make the movie work. I mean, it feels like it it, 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 it services these films in some ways to sort of poke fun at its, its own yeah. logic in, in some ways because everybody else is really <coughs> putting everything under the microscope. And, at, and, 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 and there's a fan expectation that there's this giant blackboard and every sig single little thing has right. to add up. Yeah, right. And we certainly have a giant blackboard uh, yeah. Yeah. and we needed to add up really well, yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's a lesson Chris and I have learned over the course of the movies that things need to add up emotionally, 
more than they need to add up logically. And mm -hmm. this is not to sort of say that you know logic doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, but and also, you know, if they don't add up logically, chances are they that'll undercut your emotion. They very well could, right? Um, but like Civil War is a slightly more emotional movie than Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Winter Soldier might be a tighter script, mm -hmm. uh, but Civil War is a more successful movie in many ways because you're just getting more pathos out of a lot of characters that you love. Yeah. It's that kind of stuff where we sort of recognize what film is meant to do. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to merely be a puzzle that you lay out and dissect. It's meant to be experience that you sit down and have wash over you. Yeah, it's also that's. I'm not going to call it the Marvel formula because there really is no formula. Like, I've sat in those rooms. If we had a formula, <laughs> we right. got out of there much faster. Oh, but yeah. it is a welcoming a tone, and it is, a, you know, come on in. We're all going to have fun together. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, we're going to present you with something very somber that you are going to right. yeah. enjoy yeah. or else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it has to be fun or you've dropped out of the franchise somehow. Right. Yeah. Frankly, I'm amazed to hear there's no formula because, I mean, Marvel has has yet to make a bad movie. There have been movies that haven't been as good as the other ones, uh -huh. but they haven't made a, well, a bad movie, which is incredible. The sad yeah. fact is the formula is don't leave the room until it doesn't suck. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, That's right. it's a little daunting. but Yeah. Yeah. And hire the best people in the business. That's, this is true. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of humor, Th uh, Thor's weight gain uh, is played for some great laughs, some of the biggest laughs that this mm. movie gets. Um, I've talked to Chris about this over the years. Mm. It's become sort of a running gag that these directors always make him take his shirt off, no matter what movie he's in. Sure. Um, was this a, a, a conscious parody sort of, of that, that uh, of that of that so. fact? Uh, no, it's really trying to examine. I don't want to get too somber or technical about it, but the the six OG Avengers all should re uh, respond to the five year. Uh, moment differently and one of those responses is depression is because mm -hmm. no one failed more than Thor right uh, mm -hmm. he did a, and he no one lost more than Thor mm -hmm. and you know the arcs that we're trying to give people remember where he started in his first movies first couple of movies the obligation of the throne you know does he want it does he not want it everyone wants to give it to him mm -hmm. you know everyone looks to him and that it seemed like maybe that's too much for him. Maybe what he wants is to be relieved of that. Mm. Uh, so that's where he ends up at the end of the movie, is giving it up and giving it over to Valkyrie. And it, clearly, the burden of leadership really weighed on him. And it's, it's a manifestation of that. And yes, Hemsworth in real life is a ridiculously fit person. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing that uh, to, to that moment when you reveal that he's sort of let himself go a bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it's not there just for, you know, chubby jokes. Right, right, yeah. right. And I feel like he probably had a lot of fun. I feel like oh, he was I, someone oh, that was yes, going to dive was. right into yep. that. He, That's right. he seemed delighted <laughs> That's yeah. right. to, be, yeah. to, be, to be wearing those clothes and that yeah. gear. Yeah, yeah. It, that was natural, right? He had, oh, yeah. That was no, I just <laughs> thought you should have seen what he ate. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> Always one of my favorite questions uh, to ask screenwriters, how would you say that this movie changed the most from that first draft that you turned in mm -hmm. to what we see on the big screen and uh, bonus points for being as specific as possible? Uh -huh. uh, we, uh, we've often said that Infinity War changed more because as you, if you can, now that you've seen Endgame, you realize, oh, well, it sort of is what it is. Like that, there's a reason it's three hours, and it's because of that second act. Because you've got six MacGuffins, and you got to go get them all, and you can't cut any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get into the editing room. Well, let's just screw the Power Stone story. You know, mm -hmm. like it's all very uh, tightly wound. That said, our first draft, we did not go to the Avengers movie. We didn't go to New York 2012. Mm -hmm. We went to separate missions that involved um, maybe the, I think the Triskelion going to um, sort of sneaking in the back door to Camertage and then going oh, to Asgard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think his Tony ended up going to Asgard. He's wearing a stealth suit, so he's invisible, and Heimdall can see him, because you can't get one past Heimdall, uh -huh. and they fight, and it doesn't go well. Uh, yeah, but it, also, it didn't link up emotionally. It was, right. it, they were adventure beats that didn't hit their character stories. Mm -hmm. So we had to realign things to where you knew you would really be poking at the person. Mm -hmm. uh, and one, we were too clever by half for quite a long time. Uh, we really hid what happened with Nebula and Thanos and the switcheroo, mm -hmm. and you really had no indication that that wasn't good Nebula until very late in the game. Mm -hmm. You didn't see those scenes on, the, on Thanos' ship. 
And rather than coming off suspenseful, it just confused the hell out of people. Mm -hmm. Right at the point where you want to be, where the, right at the point where Thanos attacks and you want to realize everything that has happened and how doomed everybody is, people went, no, oh, now I'm out of the movie because I don't understand what just happened. And, and you mean test audiences? Yeah, you test got audiences. That far. I got and, that far. And, I got that far. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we went back and sort of reconstructed it mm -hmm. to, to hold you by the hand a bit more, but to give you more of a feeling of, of dread as opposed to shock. That's right. Mm -hmm. And which in the end helped the ending a lot more. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, very often uh, we have to make a decision between suspense and surprise. Yeah. And so we were going for surprise in our first drafts and then I think we went with suspense ultimately. And it gets you that really nice beat between Nebula and Nebula. Mm -hmm. She beats the crap out of herself right. and yeah. you know, uh, and it's, it, it really sort of makes clear her growth arc. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I used to be mm -hmm. this person and yep. here I am on the ground. Yeah. At what point would you guys say, so the Battle of New York was an original, in the original scripts, at what point did, does, does that come into the picture? I think Joe and Anth read it and they go, why aren't we going to Avengers? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. But there's yeah, a lot of fun there. It all yeah. off. And yeah. then you can see like that whole Avengers tower sequence is maybe the most fun thing in the movie mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. the most farcical yeah. thing in the movie. And it's got, it's mm -hmm. got a lot of... It's all weaving, you know, Hulk yeah. has to go down the stairs at the same time that yep. Tony is passing Tony, and it's yep. just a lot of sort of delightful filmmaking. Yeah, cap, cap, be cap. That's right. Um, any of the, did you guys use, did you guys tap into any pre existing footage that was on the cutting room floor from any of those movies, or were, you know, were, were those all, all um, new shoots? There are, you know, the, the circle shot when you go back right. to Avengers 1. We that's recognize the shot that. We Avengers recognize that, yep. And. <sighs> Trying to think, Natalie Portman um, waking up mm -hmm. is is unused footage from from Dark World. Okay. That Rocket is then digitally inserted into. Okay. Um, so she didn't do any new shoots for this one. She, she did, did not. No. We we talked about it. We actually wrote scenes between her and Rocket, and one it you know the movie's three hours long now. It, yeah. <laughs> it was it was way too much, and it was also. Uh, it just didn't hold the water mm -hmm. that, it, again, it was, not that Rocket's a secondary character, but he's not one of the originals and he's going to make yeah. it through and go to the end. Yeah. Uh, it was spending a lot of time with two people who didn't need the, the screen time for the closure right. that we needed. Mm -hmm. We needed to put it all on Thor and keep that very and Thor light. and his mom. Like, yeah. is, remember, the, the six stones they're not just shopping trips, right? They are opportunities for emotional uh, work by these characters, closure in many ways. Mm -hmm. So Thor gets to talk to his mother and his mother gets to say, it's okay to be who you wanna be. You don't have to be the guy who everyone puts the pressure on. Tony gets to sort of make amends with his father. Steve yeah. gets to go back and see Peggy and say, oh, maybe there's another life for me out there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then in say some of the other scenes like the uh, uh, Rhodey Nebula missions, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of brings the plot back around. That brings the your antagonist back into the story. Mm -hmm. So that's doing a very specific thing as well. What drove the decision to have Thor um, ha have this exchange with his mother versus his father? Been there, right? Yeah, yeah, he's had a lot of interaction with his father, and I also am not sure his father would give him, mm. you know, the message he needed. Oh, Odin, right. Odin is a very stern, sure, driving right. guy. Sure, and him in that movie. He, Thor yeah. needs to be let off the hook at this point. Yeah, yeah, um, especially that Thor. Yeah, yeah right. looking like that. Yeah, I'm not, how does Odin respond to that Thor? <laughs> yeah. not, probably no, not great. No. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean any any film of, uh, of this scale goes through some types of, of reshoots. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, how you know what can you what can you say about what sort of changes you guys went from those original test screenings mm. uh, in, in, into those reshoots? Reshoots were primarily third act battle stuff. Okay. Like it just got to the point where you know we did all of this in 2017. And basically the first half of the year is Infinity War and mm -hmm. the second half is Endgame. And by the mm -hmm. time we're getting to the end of the Endgame portion, you know, Infinity War needs to be edited. It needs to be, like, we got to get that out the door. And so, um, uh, and the, the battle was blooming and blossoming and, you know, perhaps threatened to, to get out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, so we shot just enough sort of to make things make sense. And then we always knew that we'd go back in September of 18 mm -hmm. and do a decent amount of shooting. So that's primarily what it, what September of 18 was. Okay. Um, were there yeah, no, there's the odd uh, 
that whenever you're dealing with stuff like time travel and you know, the effects of time travel, you know, we toggled back and forth a lot between how clearly to spell out rules. Mm -hmm. And it became clear that no matter how lightly, you know, we would try to imply our rules lightly and people would go, so it's back to the future. <laughs> and, and like, we very much need it to not be Back to the Future or our, yeah. our movie doesn't make sense. No offense to Back to the Future. Yes, yeah. So, Which comes across in, in the, yeah. well, because we had to reshoot an entire scene that was dedicated yeah, to Yeah, so that, that. that scene yeah. where they're naming other movies yeah. and all that is a reshoot because it's just like, well, we really need to be very explicit and in your face about what yeah. we are saying yeah. here. It's a testament to Back to the Future yeah. that everyone who walks oh, yeah, into a time travel movie goes, well, I know right. how this works. Yes. So that even at the point where Nebula shoots old uh, Nebula yeah. at the end of the movie, yeah. much of the audience is expecting that Nebula to disappear. Right. And we're going, no, we told yeah, well, you like, it doesn't told you. work right, that way. Right, right, so we right. really needed to underline it. Right, right. Yeah. At any point uh, in any of the scripts that you guys wrote, um, did Ant-Man expand and explode in Thanos' butt? Almost no. every version yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> but, not Thanos' yeah. butt, other yeah. people's butts. Yeah. It was, it was inappropriate. Right. Yeah. Is when what we it was. started the movie yeah. that way, yeah. it really put yeah. people on. Sort There's of like an Ant-Man inner space movie just <laughs> where he just is, he's just penetrating butts. Just, he's just flying all over the place. Just uh, would watch. Yeah, <laughs> would watch. Huh. Would cue that up. No. Uh, See, so you, you, you know, Russo's lifted the, the spoiler ban. You guys thought yes. you were done with the yes. Thanos butt question, yes. but you forgot that I'm 12 years old. That's true. So, well, I have said yeah. before in public, and so I'll just say it again. Nice. Thanos takes a punch from the Hulk at the beginning of Infinity War. He's made of very strong stuff. Mm -hmm. His whole body is made of very strong yeah. stuff. If, in, in my scientific opinion, as a scientist, <laughs> if Ant-Man expanded within Thanos, mm -hmm. he, would, he would be just crushed against an immovable right. object. Yeah. Like that, that sphincter's yeah. going nowhere. Yeah. He'd be a hemorrhoid. He'd be a hemorrhoid. Basically. Yeah, at best. Basically. At yeah. best. <laughs> Thanos goes, um, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's unfortunate. Glad I went there. Yeah, uh, we uh, Hawkeye, you know, was one of those characters. We wondered where he was mm -hmm. throughout the course of mm -hmm. Infinity War. Um, obviously, we, we touched on this briefly, but that that opens opening sequence uh, just just shocking, especially as, as a father to watch that scene yeah. just yeah. just breaks you. Yes. Um, did you guys was that always the plan to open with Hawkeye? No, that was written to be uh, the end of Infinity War. Oh, okay. So the snap would happen. Um, Thanos would go to sort of the ethereal world and talk to Gamora. You'd come back, mm -hmm. you'd be on some farm you hadn't seen in many movies, right? Mm -hmm. And with a character you hadn't spent any time with in the last two and a half hours, mm -hmm. his family would disappear. Then you'd come back to Wakanda, see those people disappear. You'd go to Titan, you see those people disappear. That's a lot of locations yeah. when you sort of don't want them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think early on in editing, it was clear we're going to move that to mm -hmm. the beginning of the next one. And I didn't realize how well that would work. It yeah. reminds you of the stakes of the last one viscerally. Mm -hmm. uh, it also helps establish, it, it absolutely helps Clint's arc in this movie, mm -hmm. right? Because you watch his family disappear, then when he comes back, you know exactly what's in his heart. You know yeah. why he's a rageful psychopath, you mm -hmm. know, and killing people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and, and then when, his, when the phone rings, the end, and Linda Cardellini's face comes yeah. up, you saw her. Two hours ago, right? It's yeah. not like you had to go back a year yep. to see her face. You go, oh my gosh, there she is, and her cell service is still working. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it was the right move. I yeah. don't know if we would have been able to handle that at the end of Infinity War. I had a minor cardiac arrest yeah, just thinking just think. about yeah. just thinking about those events after yeah. the snapshot. Right. Uh, I think that was definitely the the right call. Uh, hard to imagine you guys cut much. This movie is 181 <laughs> minutes long. I only speak in minutes. Um, but I think, I think there were scenes, some scenes that you yeah. guys uh, filmed and, and did not make it into the final cut. Can you some talk about those? Scenes. Uh, yeah. We had a scene kind of showing you that Hulk is now a superhero. So it was a scene prior to the diner mm -hmm. where he's actually saving people from a burning building. Like a very straight up almost a Superman Hulk. scene. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to show like this formerly this people guy people used to view as a monster is now the last remaining superhero, and it was fun, but it didn't give you anything that diner didn't give you. Mm -hmm. It just was extraneous and it felt like noise, and yeah. so 
you get almost everything by Scott Lang going, I don't understand, or I'm so confused. Yeah. Right. And, and then you're off to the races, and it all makes sense. Um, so that one, as fun as it was to shoot at night, you know. Where, where was he? Uh, he was in Atlanta, in actually. Atlanta. He shot in Atlanta. Okay. There was no reason <laughs> for right. him not to take place well, in Atlanta. Remember, yeah. that, that, yeah. uh, those five years, not only was it a way to, to really get serious about character arcs, but it was a way to, to kind of pay homage to the What If comics, mm -hmm. right? And the idea that the snap had left only basically one superhero still around, like a guy who had gone from, mm -hmm. from a pariah to, to, the, to the, super, the, the best superhero was yeah. exciting to us, but it, the movie didn't need it. So it's that's part of the the design three years ago as we're we're crafting it, and then once you're actually sitting there with the footage, what does the movie want to be? And we learn that all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Any concerns that you guys dealt with in intro in introducing Professor Hulk? I mean, this is this is a new twist, obviously oh. that we see. Um, right. It works flawlessly, uh, but I imagine just on, on paper, there's a lot of sorting out how, how this. Well, how did it happen? Yeah. Well, to be honest, it used to happen at the end of Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he would, if you remember, he's fighting Cull Obsidian in the falls at Wakanda, mm -hmm. and the co over the course of the movie, the whole story is uh, Banner can't get along with the Hulk. Hulk won't come out. You know, he's uh, you know he's he's sick of you know being uh, Banner's errand boy, mm -hmm. right? And eventually they make a compromise, and then Smart Hulk rips out of the armor and you know wins the day by doing something sort of uh, powerful and smart. And then he turns around and Natasha shows up and he says something erudite and we go, oh, this is a different, a different Hulk. Yeah. The movie did not want it. Uh, yeah. That you flash back to the third act of that we movie. We tested it, we, we yeah. tried it a yeah. couple different ways and it was an up right when you needed the tension to be, to be amping up and mm -hmm. the gradual sense of doom to be increasing and it just, it was, a, it, it was like we kicked off a different movie right at the end of, right. of, okay. of that one. Uh, but it created a problem in that we had already shot most or if not all of uh, Endgame wherein he was already Smart Hulk. There wasn't an explanation for why he was Smart Hulk. So, right. mm -hmm. so think of those scenes. So actually the diner is a reshoot. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, or an, I mean, a reshoot implies you shot it before. It's yeah. additional mm -hmm. photography. Right. Yes. Uh, to, to get all that explained and taken care of without mm -hmm. Losing everybody. And another great example of how the humor strikes at, at just the right time to, to give you get, to give the audience some relief. Yep. Yeah. Um, we often do that or, and then allow our actors to do that, right? You um, think about some of the heavier exposition scenes in the movie. Scott Lang comes back, has to talk about quantum realm and time travel. Mm -hmm. But it's Paul Rudd. He, you know, interrupts himself by saying, you know, is that anyway a sandwich? You know, he yeah. kind of babbles and around. Like, he's just <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you disguise exposition. Yeah. You enjoy yeah. that scene. It's not just eating your vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with when, when Mark Ruffalo, as the smart Hulk, is explaining how he yeah. came to be this. He's all stuff in his face and he's thinking, you know, like, it's all, you sort of disguise the exposition as best you can through character and humor. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and, and Smart Hulk doesn't just you know work seamlessly. Uh, I've heard a lot of people call him sexy. He's uh, I you think know, I think he's a he's yeah he might there, be agreed. an object of an affection now. There for a lot is of fans. Uh, there I'm is clearly Hulk. a market out there for <laughs> large fellas. Yes, that's right. You Thanos had his following. Thanos <laughs> has a following. True. Smart Hulk has a following. Yeah. Uh, Present day Thor has a following. Oh. I had I oh, took yeah? friends to the movie and it's my a bear. My friend yes. Lisa yeah. came up to me and said, I didn't think you could make Thor sexier. Yeah. Right. Wow. She is all in on wow. uh, Baby Thor. Yeah. Wow. So now I think we know where the direction of these <laughs> Thor movies or maybe Guardians is, yeah. is, is going to go for here. I think we can expect um, some more weight on Thor. That's amazing. Big boys. Um, you know, in terms of, is, is there any time to, are you guys talking about romantic pairings at any point? I mean, you know, people have, have wondered whatever happened to Bruce and Natasha. Mm. Um, are, is there, is there, is there just no time for, for Well, to... she's dead. Right. right. She's dead. Tough relationship. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there really wasn't, both of these movies, Infinity War and Endgame, are so plot driven. Mm. There wasn't a ton of time to take any side trips about. Yeah. You know, if it was a relationship scene, it would have to be a relationship scene about how depressed they are because yeah. of Thanos. It's you know, it's just like yeah. everything, yeah. everything is under that heading. So, you know, we we nodded at it a couple times, and it just felt 
you know, it, it yeah. felt like checking a box rather than right. writing a real scene. Now, did it th those two specifically, or? Well, I mean, when, when in Infinity War, when uh, they see each other for the first time, there's a bit of a, you know, high net, mm -hmm. high Bruce sort of, mm -hmm. you know, look. And I think we even, we certainly even shot a longer scene of them talking about how he had gone away, basically gone to Rag done, done Ragnarok and come back and they hadn't. Yeah. Um, but again, cast your mind back to Infinity War. Anything that was not about Stones, Thanos, we're in trouble, this propulsive narrative mm -hmm. got jettisoned. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we tried to sew up all sorts of things. We had first drafts where, you know, Steve was uh, living with Sharon Carter and it wasn't going very well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like the movie, <laughs> the, the, yeah, it's crazy. And those are the moments where Kevin comes in and goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, we are exploring we're, every Realism, corner. Kevin. Yeah. That's right. That's, a, that's like the red marker comes right out. Yes, yeah, that. Just like, what is the movie He's want? like, yeah. I love you, but I yeah. can yeah. fire you. <laughs> yeah, and I think Thor and Valkyrie, I, I saw we're gonna have a moment. Is, that, uh, is this true? No. They were gonna kiss? No, this is this is false? They, no, they never kissed. Oh, there was a, there was was a misunderstood. Yeah. The 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 final scene on the cliff. <coughs> excuse me. Right where shake. Went on longer where Thor misunderstood some signals. Ah. Uh, but it. You know, you're we are already in danger of having 57 endings at that point. Right. To drag one on. Right. Through some comedy bits right. was sort of like. I, yeah. And I don't think Ragnarok yeah. had come out by the time we shot that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had been certainly it was in editing. Uh -huh. And so we weren't sure where that story was gonna land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, uh, I certainly, I think she repels him in that movie, right? Doesn't she sort of blow him off in that? Uh, yeah, well, oh, yeah. she has other preferences. Yeah, she, that's yeah. what I think, I got yeah. the impression that, yeah. that she, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And Catherine Langford, uh, her scene was cut. She was gonna be Morgan, Tony's grown-up right. daughter. Yeah. Your homework. Um, yes, yeah. yes. Was that, that sound, it sounds like a profound moment. She yep. basically, he's, he's flashing forward, he's having this vision, he's in a way station, I, I think. Yeah, the, it's the, the equivalent the of it. had it. the potential to be, but it, uh, you know, you're in, when Thanos does this and goes back, mm. You don't yet know what has happened, and you're not that emotionally tied into Thanos, and this only that only helps when Tony does this. Right. The, your main guy has just probably killed himself. Yeah. To cut away to a really pretty philosophical scene just kind of went. Uh, you're not letting people mm -hmm. feel the feelings that they want to feel. Mm -hmm. um, it also like when you cut back to little Gamora that's a person you've seen earlier in the movie. Right. Mm -hmm. You cut back to fully grown Morgan, you then have to, you know, you have to take a little time going, oh, I know who that is, right. and everything co goes up here, and that's right. it should be down it's here. It's thinkier yeah. than it yeah. used to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. it was a great scene, it just kind of like, well, it was a great scene that wanted to be in its own movie somewhere. Right, right. Um, and in, in terms of characters, I mean, you already have seventeen thousand. Uh, slight exaggeration. Um, any any other, any characters that were were in there and were in the mix at, at some point, um, and you guys had to lose for for, for time. I'm trying to think. Not really. I mean, I, I certainly we we weren't. Null injured. the infinite darkness. It's in a very was in early a draft. draft. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in general, we were reaching back and plucking people from the past, and so yeah. that we can do try to do good character work. Yeah, you know your Howard Starks and your yep. uh, callbacks. Uh, yes, you know. and Priga and people like that. Yeah, uh, we were certainly not bringing in Adam Warlock or new people or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nakia, I think, was one that people were that's yeah. sort of hearing where, she, where she was. Well, it would. I think we would have decided that she snapped, so it really would just be she would be. She turn up at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like Shuri. Yeah. Right. 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 So it's right. it's. Or um, it, Angela Bassett's character. Uh, uh, Ramonda, yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you have to imagine like these shoots are already scheduling probably the hardest thing a line producer has ever done <laughs> yeah. is That's, get these yeah. people in these rooms at the same time. Like yes. Tony's funeral. In Atlanta. Is, right. that's, there's, that's not patched together when we could grab those people. All those right. people are standing on the shore of a, of a pond. Right. And there were the occasional moment where it's like, we can get everybody but one person. Yeah. Do you really mm. want to start this process all over yeah. again? Because I will. Right. You know, Michael yeah. Grillo, yeah. our line producer, will do anything. It just, you know, yeah. we're burning, we're burning a lot of money right now, yeah. right. and sometimes you have to go no. Any thought into bringing Vision back? Was that ever on the table? Uh, the story of Vision is 
Wanda's story in our mind, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. so the person most invested in bringing him back wasn't in the movie, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, yes, I guess at one point we had one of our 17 endings was pulling Vision out of a drawer and going, hmm, mm -hmm. but there was never any idea that we'd, we'd bring him back and yeah. play a big role. Yeah. Plus, when you have to, when he's powered by the Mind Stone and you have to take the Mind Stone back in time, mm -hmm. It creates this little loop where we can bring Vision back to life for about five minutes, but then Cap's got to rip it out of his head again. Uh, no, and right. yeah. yeah, I mean, I assume yeah. we could yeah. probably get him. I don't know. Running. <laughs> That's what's it. called someone else's problem. It is. It is. How far in advance did you guys plan who was going to die? Uh, well, I mean, we start. We outlined the movies the last four months of 2015, mm -hmm. um, and then the first draft was say May of 16. And most of the same people, uh, I'd say all of the same people. You're talking about died, died, dead. In this end. one, yeah. uh, Tony and Natasha. They were always yeah. the ones. We certainly played with the idea of, of remember, this is our own problem. Uh, the rules of Vormir are very clear. <laughs> you have to show up with someone you love, right? Uh, there weren't too many candidates uh, that worked for us, mm -hmm. right? You can't have Rocket and Steve show up together. You know that doesn't that doesn't seem. I like, like you. That's yeah. right. But we know the deep history between um, uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. uh, so we certainly played with uh, you know Hawkeye going over. Uh, it did. It wasn't the end of of an arc for him in the same way that it was mm -hmm. for uh, Natasha, right? A woman who started with so much red in her leisure, giving up her life to save universe, her family, the families that she basically just got, you know, that's her story as being the last woman on the wall, you know, trying to, she says it in the movie, like, I've been, last five years, I've been trying to get to right here, mm -hmm. just bringing everybody back. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it wasn't, it was the right decision. It's certainly controversial in that it's, you know, the, f the first female superhero of the Marvel Universe, mm -hmm. right? Um, but a lot of conversations, we all decided it was probably the best. And saving his family as well, which is a yeah, place we didn't want family. it to be about that. I yeah. mean, it's not like her life is worth less um, than his because he's got yeah. a family. That yeah. uh, we don't believe that at all. Um, so that's not. Te I mean, if you bring that to it, I can't help that. But that's yeah. not in the text. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like there was this there was this shared communal experience among people who have seen this movie because I had this conversation three, with three or four people at the premiere after I saw it, yeah. where watching that scene just I mean this is again we talked about how sort of the, the internet and the news and the trades yeah. affect how we how yeah, we see right. these movies. Yeah. Yeah. Watching that sequence where they're going like you died no you die you die essentially yeah. right yeah uh, I'm paraphrasing yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're. I'm going. Wait, There's but but, no way. but she has a pre. She has a she's a movie. And yeah. He has a he has a TV spinoff. Right. How's this going to work? How's oh, one of them going to go? Gonna jaded go? Hollywood. <laughs> what? It, what? It's it's natural. You're you're it you're, is, you're it, flooded with it's it. It's natural you know? and I would say you know unless you're watching a snuff film, mm -hmm. nobody's ever died in a movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. just go with the emotions you're having <laughs> at the go, moment. Just, okay, just go with yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, but it all but guarantees that her movie is a prequel. Uh, I, I don't know. You're I, not going to comment on that. Don't we don't know. <laughs> they literally, I literally don't know what don't the know. movie is. You know. uh, in terms of Tony's death, did, did that ever change? I mean, obviously, I, I assume it was going to be from the snap all along. Yeah. Um, it, any of the logistics change at any point? Sure. We, you know, it's our instinct to write a lot for a guy who talks a lot, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that maybe he'd have a chance to say goodbye to people and emote more. Uh, and Robert is a really good caretaker of his character. Mm -hmm. And he did not want to do a lot of talking. He wanted to sort of be blown out, mm -hmm. uh, lean up against that you know, piece of wreckage and, and sort of let people say goodbye to him. And that, we learned that in Infinity War, right? It's, it's, it's the reaction of other characters to the deaths of characters that is the most impactful, mm -hmm. right? When Okoye sees T'Challa disappear, I, I have emotion because of her reaction, not because he disappeared. Right. So it's right. Pepper and Rhodey and Peter Parker yeah. that you know, get me uh, yeah. in my throat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, any, so was there any ad-libbing then? Because I remember you guys talked about um, when, when, when Peter died. Sure. Tom, Tom oh, right. ad-libbed that. I mean, it's, it's basically, you know. You know, people, people are welcome to do whatever they can do to get the emotion across. Yeah. Um, Really, sort of Robert, who is a master ad libber, kind of <laughs> he right. he anti ad libbed. He just you yeah. know yeah. sucked it in, and it yeah. was pretty cool. Did you guys ever consider calling this movie Avengers Time Heist? I do like Time Heist as a silly phrase. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah.
You, Obviously, it would have given away uh, more yes, than you wanted to. That's right. Again, a, a, a thing that this movie overall, just as an event, did masterfully. Um, what, it's so refreshing not to show us anything but in the, oh, yeah, the trailers was, beyond the first 20 minutes. I, was so I mean, the fact that you guys left th three, three hours of mystery for the fans basically, was, was yeah. incredible. Well, think of the, that's because Marvel has earned the confidence that mm -hmm. they can go, mm -hmm. we're sure. People are going to show up, yeah. We, and it, even if we don't tease all the things we have, we know what we have yeah. under our coat here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're going to come anyway, and we just yeah. give you a few minutes from the beginning. Yeah. We know we left you with yeah. with a need to know, yeah. and it was. And now that means that the word of mouth, the mm -hmm. sort of the delight that people are spreading on the internet, hopefully mm -hmm. without many spoilers. It's, it's why it's part of the reason it did so well that opening weekend is people were, oh my God, I, I hear amazing stuff and yeah. you're, you don't know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for the most people, yeah. for the most part, yeah. nobody spoiled it. Mostly, Sa yeah. Save our, our Buffalo Bills. Save for LaShawn. La LaShawn McCoy. <laughs> no, um, that's right. he, you know, I, I feel like the Bills might have to cut him now. May he just, sprain an ankle. Fireable offense, Not Katie. everybody should be on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Um, we're gonna we'll wrap this up in a few. We got to get to another topic. I don't know if you guys know the internet's a little obsessed with the the optics of uh, time the ti time travel in this mm. film. Um, I'm gonna bring out a visual aid here. Oh, oh you having the, suck oh, punch me. What do you got? In the, in, the, in the background, just 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 to represent. Uh, uh, Oh, yes. The, the time travel yes. movie. This looks I, very familiar. I assume yeah. this is what was in your office. Not Kinda. unlike it. It's not yes. unlike it. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is just a little little visual guide here. Yeah. Um, I think the, I think the basic most question is, you know, we talked a little bit about. Is this right? Yeah, I'm just I'm uh, starting here. Okay, I, I my guess back. is yes. My guess mm. is not the, the scale as you the, can see. The the first date Peggy dance is probably closer to 1948. Yeah, 1948. Uh, he has that. to go through the first two seasons of Agent Carter. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah, because she that. sort of had a, a probably a falling out with uh, uh, Agent Souza. Um, so I will say 1948 there. 1948. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yep. 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 Otherwise, okay. Battle of New York 2012, Asgard. That's right. Oh snap. Yep. That's all. That seems accurate-ish. Mm, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's not drawn to scale. Yeah. No, it is. It's yeah. definitely not to definitely yeah. not to scale. Yeah. yeah. Um, but how do you how do you guys describe in like the mo the most basic terms the sort of the, the mechanic mechanics of, of time travel beyond what what it, what's expressed in the movie? Yeah. Which I know. Uh, uh, so we brought in. Think of the problem we had. Um, uh, we had. Uh, Back to the Future has sort of one mission it has to do, and, yeah. it, and let's face it, we we bow down <laughs> to Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis. Yes. Classic. Um, uh, uh, and then they create this sort of device of the picture, which you see the ripple effects, even though yeah. you're not going, I, I mean, keep in mind, if you were to flash to, what year is that, 1985, mm -hmm. are, are, is his brother losing his legs in real time? Yeah. Like, what, what There's is There's a horror movie taking right. place. Well, that's what I mean. Like, we, the, what People you, never think about that. never think yeah. of that, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, uh, but we had six MacGuffins, right? Mm -hmm. That if if we were to use those time travel rules, and every time you did something in the past, and it yeah. created a Biff's Casino in in the future, yeah. and yet it did that every time with a new Biff's Casino, uh, and you came back out uh, to your present time, and the world was on fire, like yeah. you, we couldn't get anything done. Yeah. Yeah. We brought in uh, a number, uh, two scientists, uh, uh, experts in quantum physics. And they said um, that research indicates that uh, the same particle, say, you know, thrown through the Hadron Collider or something, yeah. uh, ca uh, at the quantum level, the same particle can exist in two places at once. And we said, oh, that's interesting to us because maybe that means we can use a, a thing we already have in the universe called mm -hmm. the quantum realm mm -hmm. for time travel because we did not want time travel to just be uh, Doctor Strange's time stone. Um, so uh, that's why... Uh, we respectfully asked the makers of Ant-Man and the Wasp to leave him in the quantum realm mm -hmm. so that he could be the catalyst for the end of Act One and provide us with the hope we need uh, uh, going forward. Yeah, and we couldn't have those Back to the Future rules, I mean, not only because it would be insanely complicated, Yeah. but as, as Rhodey suggests, you could just go back and kill mm -hmm. baby Thanos or you could go right. and flush the time stone baby down Hitler the toilet argument. or yeah. right. just change one thing and everything's fine. Yeah. You know, but it needed to be a grand undertaking that right. required a lot of sacrifice and a lot of effort. Yeah, and we wanted to go to the other movies. That the the 
the 22nd movie was going to be a celebration of the movies in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was definitely going to be a mic drop for the six uh, principal Avengers. Mm -hmm. And so that we were not afraid to sort of roll around in the canon and show it from new angles. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and even before we hit on that on, on the time heist idea, that was always we always wanted to do something like that. We didn't know quite what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so in general, it's a branch reality system versus a one reality system. Is the yeah. which is what scientists say theoretically, if time travel were possible, right. which it isn't. Everyone, uh, it would sort of look <laughs> like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard a lot in, in, in days since we've heard a lot about uh, pocket dimensions, divergent timelines, mm, yes, branched yes, realities. Yes. yes. What, what is the e easiest way to boil that concept down our, in a way that won't make my head hurt? Well, right. Our, it's a combination of what Hulk says and what the Ancient One says. Mm. One, that if you go to the past from your present, the present becomes your past, so mm. it's not going to change. Uh, and that the only thing that causes branch realities is removal of one of the six infinity stones. Right. So, like, if I go back in time and grab your shoe, you're not going to have a a shoeless universe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only if you move the stones. Right. Now that, that's our opinion, to be fair. Yeah. I yeah. think Joe and Anth might have a different opinion, uh, uh, but that is, that's sort of where, and, and it kind of depends on what Marvel wants to do going forward. Yeah. Right? Uh, I, I, we watched the Homecoming trailer, like uh, the Far From Home trailer like everyone else, and they mentioned uh, branch realities and alternative multiverse. Right. And we went, oh, I didn't know they are going to do that. So yeah. they may have a different uh, need yeah. going forward, uh, but it was our thought that Steve lived in his own timeline and always married Peggy, and those kids you see in Winter Soldier are his kids. And yeah, that is that, that was the idea. That's been one of one of the biggest questions. That that's uh, we like that idea, but yeah. we'll certainly uh, uh, wait to see how Marvel wants mm -hmm. to move going forward. <laughs> Another one is how Peter is still in high school and that one's easy. No, I mean, that's that's super easy. some of the people blipped you know some of the people were snapped away and some weren't yeah ned was that's why they're the same age that's what that's peter what didn't that finish was. high school yeah so it doesn't he's matter going, whether he's going he's, back yeah he's, and he's the same and he's back. the same age he's the same age that's so right. so his classmates will obviously yeah, yeah be different yeah I, there's a lot of people he doesn't know in school so it's like a new kid yeah. in school that's why <laughs> that's he looks right. so forlorn that's and yeah. then he finally sees ned and everything's yes. like oh great yeah. yes that's gonna be an awkward first day back well i think they'll have a lot of fun with it with yeah far from home i can only assume far from home um and then what can you say about, so you mentioned that there's an alternate reality with Steve. It might be. Um, no, no, it's a non-alternate reality. Well, but the, right. to be fair, Alter Joan Anthony there's, is an alternate reality. Well, yes. right. you know, are they here? Right. <laughs> right. right. Um, but how did how did you imagine how that? I mean, how that affected uh, the events of, especially the movies that you guys wrote. I mean, you you, you referenced. Well, again, like so, as Chris said. Uh, he goes back and puts the stones back yeah. with the intention of uh, of clipping those branches yep. so that in a world where uh, Thor didn't have his hammer and uh, the reality stone wasn't there on yeah. Asgard yeah. and the dark elves came and wrecked stuff, yep. that that got erased, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So no harm, no foul was, right. was generally the idea. Yep. Um, but, you know, there are alternate versions where <laughs> life sucks over there, yeah. right? Uh, how sick are you guys of explaining the mechanics of your time, time travel? <laughs> I'm not going to torture you anymore. I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> it's 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 a complicated it's a complicated subject. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, people have, obviously this movie is stacked with with Easter eggs. Uh, one people have called out the second act is an Easter egg. <laughs> yes, ex ex exactly. Uh, in in amazing callbacks and cameos, um, people are calling out things like there's a little moment where Okoye mentions um, an, an earthquake. earthquake in, yeah. in Africa, maybe some hints that that could be a, a, a Black Panther antagonist. Oh, um, may, I, again, that's a yeah, maybe. But Namor, there are, who's like the like uh, Namor yeah. the Submariner. Namor, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I have heard this. That was not our intention. Honestly, and also not a hundred percent sure of the who owns. Them. That's right. Um, yeah. It's also uh, a landlocked country, you know. Like, yeah. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, yeah. Who's that strange that, pointy eared tourist? <laughs> yeah, but you guys can put you guys can put that one to bed. At least. Well, it was not our intention, but yeah. certainly it happens all the time where things you know retroactively you know, get. Yeah, and there's sure. there is 
there is an entertainment as you're writing to to plant things that could be things sure. but aren't yeah. you know it's like you did drop sort names. of say that we yes. drop names occasionally that kind yeah of yeah are there any uh are there any moments or scenes that you can tease because people are going to get are going back and on repeat viewing sure um anything you guys can tease that you don't want to say right. explicitly but to right. look at when you watch this movie again oh boy peggy does drop the name of captain britain i think but you can barely hear yeah, Peggy, you can barely right? Hear. She's behind glass and talking to a guy off screen. Oh, okay. But uh, so she drops a, a, a name in canon. Yeah, okay. when, uh, I mean, uh, I don't think this is, it's not hidden. You probably heard it. But when Howard Stark comes into the lab and finds Tony, he's, yeah. asking, to, he's asking if Arnim Zola is around, who right. we later saw to be leading Hydra in, uh, inside a computer in Winter Soldier. I don't uh -huh. think this means that Howard Stark is in Hydra. No, I don't think so either. Okay. Let me yeah. just defend his okay. good name. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, by the way, the, the the moment between Tony and Howard, I got. I don't know if this was intentional or, or not, or just my interpretation, but I got strong Field of Dreams vibes yeah. from that sequence. Yeah. You know, there's all sorts of wish fulfillment going on in yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Cool. So uh, you guys are still alive. Uh, what is what is next for for you guys after this? Uh, well, a long rest. Um, we started a studio with Joe and Anthony Russo, mm -hmm. so that's what has been occupying our time for the last year and a half or so. Um, so we write a few movies for it, uh, for the company, but we also help shepherd the projects that come in. So, mm. you know, one day we might be helping out on a, on a thriller and another day we might be helping out on a kid's movie. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's pretty exciting to us, uh, guys who have had more or less the same job for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now to have three or four jobs in a given week is, is taxing for us, but it's also pretty, pretty exciting. Nice. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. Awesome, all right. Uh, all, it's always so good to talk to you guys. Thanks, Appreciate man. you guys coming in.